of the gates with some bad news for the birds. Safety Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is out indefinitely after suffering a lacerated kidney in Sunday night's win over the Packers. It is not expected to be season ending and there is no word on if he'll end up on injured reserve. CJ GJ leads the NFL with six interceptions this season. He sent out this post on Instagram last night saying, quote, passionate about what I do. I'll be back. We hope he's back very soon. We wish him all the best in his recovery. And we welcome you in to Burt's Huddle powered by PointsBet alongside the man, the myth, the walking, talking legend himself, Barrett Brooks. <laughs> I am a mere mortal, Taryn Hatcher. Barrett, how big of a blow is this realistically? How much he's been able to contribute to the Eagles league leading takeaway total? Well, when you look at it, six interceptions came in, immediately became an impact player on this defense. He's allowed them to go out there and play a pretty aggressive style because they trust him to play back deep. They trust him to play in the box. He's starting to learn where his fits in are in the defense as far as running the ball. I mean, he went, we lost a really good player, at least for the next two weeks uh, with him being gone. It's brutal. And today, defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon talked about losing one of his starting safeties. It's the bird's eye view presented by Ocean Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. Tough to see that because he was in pain. That's a tough injury. All, all injuries are tough, but really felt bad for him because he was he was hurting pretty good. But um, you know he's played really good football for us, and it's going to be like you know we've had some guys that have went in and out of the lineup, and you know we all got to pick up the slack and uh, be able to to function without him. So uh, that's that's what we'll do. And that brings us to Barrett's three-point stance presented by your Mercedes. Stance number one, the Eagles, and I think this is fairly obvious, cannot afford many more injuries, Barrett, especially the, the areas, the, the groups that they're seeing injuries occur to depth-wise. No question. I mean, if we were talking about the offensive line, we've got plenty of backups to the offensive line. Quality backups can come in, and they wouldn't, wouldn't miss the beat on the offensive side of the ball. At the defensive line, you can, you know, rotate guys in. We just brought in two horses. We got plenty of guys on the defensive line. But it's the positions that we're losing right now that we're not healthy at that's really putting us behind the buck. You look at tight end number one, quarterback number two, and now safety number three. That are, those are three positions in which we can't afford to have people gone in. We're talking about a guy that led the league in, say, in, uh, in, in, in picks with Chauncey Garner Johnson, uh, the number three tight end in the NFL, uh, NFL with Dallas Goddard, and one of the best slot corners in the league in Avante Maddox. Now we're asking people to step in at this, you know, point in the season. I mean, if it would happen earlier, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, you want to stay healthy all the time, but if it happened earlier, at least these guys would have had some reps kind of developed throughout the year. Well, these guys at the end, this is where it happens, you know, we're, we're, we're getting ready for playoff football. This is where you start, you know, falling into playing positively um, in a direction that you want to be healthy going into the uh, postseason. Um, I, I, you know, I love the fact that this team is very, very good at putting guys in and, and the next guy up. But, dang, go on, man, you know, especially, the, you know, the safety position. Right now, we don't have a fret, you know, rookie playing, starting right now and Reed Blankenship. Kayvon Wallace kind of got demoted. Good special teams player, but, you know, I love what we, we saw from, from Reed Blankenship going into this last game. Got a pick from a goat, then turns around, has some great tackles. He made plays, you know, that you didn't see that were, you know, upper level, you know, kind of plays that we needed at that time. So Reed has got to step up, but damn, man, I, I just hate that we're going through this right now, going into really the playoffs that start in December. That's when they really start. That's when you start jockeying position. When you got guys like that going, you got your starting tight end going, um, you know, you can start and slot hunter gone, and now our starting safety, we can't afford to get anybody else hurt. We've got to make sure we go out there, stay as healthy as we can be, but also make sure we're planning to go into this, this uh, playoff situation as healthy as we can go. So Captain Blankenship to save the day? Yep. Have <laughs> you say Captain Blankenship? Love it, love it, Captain love it. Love it. At least he got that number changed. He had by far the ugliest number as far as being to say, what was it, 47, 49, something oh, like that? Yeah. I'm like, come on, Reed. I'm glad you changed your number, man. But hey, it's time to play. Young fella, let's get it going. Strap it up.
It was, You're not just special teams. You got to go out there and play, bro. It was it was so interesting too to be in that locker room after the game because we everybody obviously Reed gets a big group of reporters, right? And every single player around the locker room who saw him was hooting and hollering for him while yeah. he was in his interview trying to distract him. He's he bold right he now. He couldn't wipe a smile off his face. You <laughs> could tell he was trying to play it cool. Very exciting moment. But I mean, the Eagles actually really might need a lot out of him. So here's no, what he's up to the task. We definitely need a they lot. They definitely out of him. will. Yes. There you go. All right, we're moving on to stance number two. Something a little bit more positive, something I know you're going to be excited about, because Barrett has said time and time again that the Eagles have the best offensive line in football today. You are taking it a step further. The Eagles have the best, their offensive line is the best position group of any position group in the entire NFL, you say. No, no question. The most you know, talented room. I mean, you, you're talking about a collective group of guys that are the best in the NFL. And I went there and I went through a list and I looked at it. You know, all right, you look at the 49ers D-line. You got Busa. You got Bosa, you got, uh, Ken Law, Givens, uh, Echobon. I think our defense line, I mean, offensive line is better than them. Even look at Cincinnati's uh, wide receivers. They got Chase, Higgins, and Boyd. They okay. They're really good, but they're not better than this offensive line. These guys are the far, far. I mean, they're above any of these guys as far as what they bring to the table. They're the most dominant force in the NFL. They're almost unstoppable. You get them going in the right direction, running the rock, you can't stop them. At least, you know, with receivers, you know, you can reroute those guys, you know, maybe get in their head a little bit by, you know, push them around a little bit. These guys right here, they don't care. They're just going to maul you. I even looked so far as look at the Cowboys' defensive line. They got Lawrence, Armstrong. They probably got the best defensive player in the, in the, in the NFL right now at Parsons, mm -hmm. but they still can't hold a fiddle to this offensive line. In fact, I cannot wait till Christmas Eve where this offensive line destroys that defensive line of Dallas. They're going to take them apart because you know why? This offensive line is by far the best in the business. That locker room and in that individual meeting room have the best coach, number one, the best offensive line, number two. I beg somebody to come try to make somebody, uh, you know, make a difference. Come, we can go player for player versus anybody, any position. Any position. A-plus from Statland University, you would say. All right, finally, you're telling me, Michael Clay, a man needed some better answers today when he was asked about the Eagles' kick coverage issues. Here's what Clay had to say. Giving up three kickoff, explosive kickoff returns on your kickoff coverage is nothing to to be proud about. It's unacceptable, first of all, for myself as, a, as the special teams coordinator for the kickoff coverage. But again, there's been some, been some good things all around the season. But in terms of that game, um, just some opportunities to make a tackle to probably save it at the 25, 28 yard line where we missed out on. Um, Got to get better off getting off blocks, you know, in terms of handling our leverage in those situations. All right, Barrett, so to put it plainly, I need your more. thoughts? <laughs> I need more. I need more. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, this is supposed to be great execution from a, from a coordinator. We need more than that. Three explosive plays? Yes, I mean, that, they that made a short field for the defense. They have not flipped the field this year. We have had not a, a quality kickoff return or punt return this year. In fact, the biggest results we've had is when we've, you know, this week when we had a kickoff return that at least got some yardage. We haven't had that before. Then I'm looking at, we had two fake punts that were, you know, ended up being first downs, uh, a block kick. Those are all things we can't win with. So we need more from the special teams unit. We need more for them helping us having some impact plays, maybe flip the field well, in favor of the defense or maybe the offensive side of the ball. We need more from this defense, I mean, uh, from the special teams to help either defense or the offense. Just, you know, they're, they're hurting us right now. And I don't want it to bite us in the butt later on, especially in the playoffs. Also, block for Britton Covey. That's the man will run into traffic. Just give him like a couple, couple extra yards. You got my little dog looking like a crash dummy out there. We got a block for him. Let's I go, mean, man. But he's fearless. God bless him. No, fearless, fearless don't mean smart. Now you gotta, you gotta go out there and let somebody block for you, man. Right. Run off the blocks, you know. Zip and dip, not dip and zip. There it stands <laughs> enough to break. All right, we got much more ahead here on Burr's Huddle. Here's the playbook presented by your Philadelphia area Cadillac dealers. Could Chauncey Gardner-Johnson's injury possibly mean the return of Malcolm Jenkins? He says he's ready. And John Clark joins the show with more on that subject. Plus, we look at the Eagles' odds to have the best record in the entire NFL.